Hello, Tiger fans. Uh, today is Tuesday, September 3rd. Mark Fitzpatrick is away for a week, so I'm Paul Blackman filling in. Our guest today is Phil Zeke, who is leaving presently with Paul Sinelli, or just finished Paul Sinelli here in Kansas City, and going to Chicago to be assistant counsel for the Big Ten Conference. And today we've had a great presentation about college realignment. So, first of all, thank you for coming. We appreciate it a lot. I just love being here. Great to be among Tigers. And you said you, your parents were, were Tigers, right? That's right. But they couldn't persuade you not to go to Michigan, right? They, they tried. They tried. <laughs> well, you got a winner, that's for sure. You got a national this championship. This year, that's right. So uh, today your presentation with the assistance of a, of a slideshow was about how we got where we are today in college football, or not just football, but basically football realignment, yeah. correct? That's right. And it goes back historically uh, quite a ways back to at, at least uh, the early 1980s. Exactly right. And the series of Supreme Court cases have you know, over time shaped this landscape where money is what talks. And that's how you get these strange matchups like uh, California going to the Atlantic Coast Conference. So when this first started, it was really, I don't think anybody foresaw what we have today. No. It's sort of the uh, unintended consequences. Back then, it was just a matter of getting on TV more than the 14 that the That's NCAA right. allowed. Is that right? That's right. And it, it happened at the same time that uh, TV networks started proliferating, and they realized that college sports, college football in particular, is a really valuable product. Now, I'm old enough to remember when college football meant watching a game Saturday right. afternoon on ABC, Keith Jackson or Chris Schenkel, right. and then you'd see the bowl games, right. all six of them, and, and that was pretty much it for, for college yeah. football, right? Yep, that's right. And now we have, you know, since 1990, there have been uh, well over 100 college football-driven realignment moves that schools have made from one conference to another. A lot of that has to do with exposure, with how, how often we can get on TV and for how much money. So would it be fair to say that a lot of this also came about because the proliferation of other of cable networks, yeah. ESPN particularly? Yeah. yeah, and streaming has only made it more... Uh, it's only created more outlets for this thing that everybody wants to watch. Now you can watch dozens of games at any time on a Saturday afternoon. So in addition to the money, I guess it would also be a matter of inventory? That's exactly what it is. And that's that's how you'll hear TV executives talk about it. How can we increase our inventory? How can we increase the value of our inventory? So that led people, schools and, and their boosters and administrators to be looking around, where can we get a little bit better deal or a little more exposure? Yeah, and for many schools, sometimes it happened that crassly. How, how much more money can we make? Other schools talk about it in terms of fit. Who are our real rivals? How do we, how do we uh, get in with our peer schools? So we didn't get to this today at the meeting, but it might be a good thing to put on, sure. on our uh, YouTube here, is how did this affect Missouri? What part did this play in Missouri leaving the Big 12 and going to the SEC? I think Missouri's role as a key player in these moves goes back further than that, right? It was a charter member of the Big 12 Conference, which, as one consequence of its formation, meant the destruction of the Southwest Conference. Mizzou played was a huge deal as a member of the Big 12 Conference for many years, and when it decided to leave, I think that was a, an early warning sign for the Big 12's uh, stability in particular, to have, to have a flagship university take its ball and go to the SEC. And I would think you would think in retrospect it was a good move then. Sure, especially financially, right? Nobody can argue with the, the additional resources that Tiger Athletics have. That, that may come across as crass, but what it means is more scholarships, more exposure, particularly for women's and Olympic sports, um, more staff members, and a, a better fan experience for Tiger fans everywhere. One last question, sure. and that is, and I brought this up at the meeting, how do you foresee all the factors that we've talked about, money, exposure, inventory, affecting the possibility of a Super League? I think it's a very real possibility. Um, you see uh, in commentary about every single um, realignment move, well, what does this mean if football breaks off from the rest of the NCAA? I think Mizzou is really well positioned if that kind of thing happens. Um, and the more financial pressure is put on what are called helmet games, right? Big deal schools playing against one another, uh, the more likely a Super League becomes. Uh, how long down the road would you think that might be a reality? 
Um, it's hard to say. The, the two biggest conferences have TV contracts that go for at least another five years. I'd be surprised to see uh, anything happen before then. But things are moving so fast that I, I think it's anybody's guess. Great. Phil, again, thank you so much for being yeah, our yeah, guest. You, Good luck for you uh, with the Big Ten thank in you. Chicago. Thanks very and, much. And um, we'll look for you down the road. All right. Next week, our guest will be Chase Kaufman, Missouri All-American and pro football tight end. We hope to see you there.